This is Johanna Thomas talking with Andy Mant all about light and his advanced light filtering eyewear in a company called Blue Blocks. The only company who offer blue light filtering lenses backed by science. Andy, welcome to the Way Forward show. Thank you so much for having me on. It's an absolute honour to be able to uh, to speak to uh, your amazing audience. Oh, bless you. Thank you. Bless so, you. as this might be quite an in-depth chap, chat, I would like to get your details across at the start of the show. Can you please tell the listeners your website and social media sites so that they can all support and follow? Absolutely. So, the website is blueblocks.com. So, that's B L U B L O X.com. Um, the social media handles um, if you just type in the company name into Facebook, which is Blue Blocks, um, I'll spell that again B L U B L O X. Um, that will bring us up. Um, and also on Instagram, Blue Blocks Official. Um, and they're our main platform. So, um, yeah, definitely swing by all three of those and, and check us out. Okay. Perfect. Lovely. Now, I'm super excited to get into this topic today. Being a holistic health and wellness coach and an avid biohacker, light is a very important factor of our environment and our lifestyle that can have considerable effects on our well-being. But a lot of people don't even consider it. I mean, there is so much I want to get, you know, to cover today. So let's just get started. Uh, going back to basics, Andy, explain with your expertise, because I know you are an expert, on the different types of light, which are good and which are bad for us when we are overexposed. Absolutely. That's a great, um, a great starting point. So basically, light can be divided into um, two separate categories. So you've got artificial light. Um, so that's light from, say, your smartphone, from your house lights, from any sort of LED backlit digital device like an, an iPad or your laptop, your television, etc. Um, and then you have natural light. OK, um, and natural light is, is from the sun. Now, um, sunlight is, is, is obviously um, extremely good for you. And the reason it's extremely good for you is it's a very balanced spectrum. It has all the different colors of light in it. Like think when you see a rainbow, that's basically the sun personified. So you get, um, you know, your reds, your orange, your, your blues, your greens, your ambers, etc. In, uh, in sunlight. You also get um, a lot of invisible light in sunlight as well. Um, ultraviolet, um, A, B and C, um, and also so infrared light. Now, all these different components of um, light that's found in the sun have all different types of positive effect on um, vitamins that are produced in your body um, and also hormones. Now, when you actually alter frequencies of light, like um, what scientists have done in creating artificial light, is that you're removing part of the visible spectrum and the entire invisible spectrum and as lights have evolved um, LEDs have evolved over you know the last sort of 20 or 30 years from the old incandescent bulbs that we used to have mm -hmm. they become very very high in the blue portion of the spectrum of light okay. now when you actually look at light both naturally and both artificially um, we mentioned earlier that lights different frequencies of light have different effects on the body now blue light is one that gives us energy and gives us makes us feel alert but it's also very damaging um, now what nature does to counteract that is they put red light in the sun which then is restorative and helps repair any of the damage that blue found in the sun does now what led lights do um, the artificial side of, of light is they only have blue they hardly have any red so we're causing a lot of damage to our eyes our skin and our hormones from the blue light mm. but we're not exposing ourselves to any red light which is meant to be there to counteract those negative um, effects so that's probably uh, in, in layman terms in a nutshell the difference between I guess natural and artificial light perfect okay so that's clear so we need to be aware of our overexposure to the blue light now in our homes for example what bulbs are the worst offenders I mean I have halogen lights in my home um, apart from a few pink, Him you know, those red Himalayan crystal lamps. Uh, are they high in blue spectrum lights or what are the best to fill our house with? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a lot of misconception out there that people think that, um, you know, blue light is physically seeing the, the, the color blue um, from your LED lights, but that's not the case. Okay, So many people put um, LED or, or halogen 
bulbs into their um, house or even fluorescent lights um, when you get the tubing lights um, in some of the old classrooms. Um, and that gives out like an amber or like a, a yellow or, or, or a white type light, but it's still very high in blue light. So all different frequencies go into to the light um, and it just so happens that it, um, it emits that sort of white color, but it is in fact very high in blue. Um, you, can, you can't really tell that by the naked eye. Um, we can... You, your audience will have to take my word for it because we have lab grade spectrometers where we've tested LED lights. But if you if you went on Google and Googled spectrum for an LED light, you would see that it's very high in, in the blue um, the blue portion. Um, and that's the same that's um, same is true for halogen, same is true for fluorescent. Um, so they are the worst offenders to, to have in your house. Now, the best lights that you want to put in your house would be incandescent but that is extremely hard to find these days um, because they um, basically stopped or, or reduced the amount of um, these types of bulbs that they started um, uh, that, that they didn't want to create because they weren't energy efficient the reason leds have become brighter and, and um, you know cheaper is because they wanted to make them energy efficient not use as much energy and save the user money but what they're saving in money they are paying for in their health now one of the other major issues with LED lights is, is something called flicker. Um, so blue light aside, the, the energy saving component of an LED light bulb and the way it's set up um, electronically is that it saves money because it's not a constant beam of light. It's very rapidly flickering. Um, and this rapid flickering actually it doesn't require as much energy as having a light on constantly like LED, um, like incandescent used to be. Um, and this flicker effect, actually, when you video it on your iPhone in slow-mo, you'll see it. Yes, um, I was just going to say, yeah. you see it, if you take, often if you take a photo of your computer or something, you can see the flicker. Absolutely, yeah, and that's very damaging to the um, uh, to the nervous system. So you've got to be very careful with that as well. So if you want um, to, to hack your light environment in your house, you, you are definitely going to need um, either flicker-free light bulbs, um, which are very, very hard to find with an LED component in them. Um, there are a couple of companies out there that, that make them um, or really search for incandescent lights. So obviously trying to get natural light is, is better. Um, I mean, personally, I have. I have red light bulbs in, in, in my house um, because any kind of blue or, or even most of the green spectrum after dark is, is going to disrupt your circadian rhythms, your hormones and, and your sleep. Exactly. Well, we'll get into that juicy stuff in just a second. But as you really are quite the light expert, uh, so what sparked your interest and enthusiasm in all this? I mean, tell us your particular story and how Blue Blocks came about. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've always been into like alternative health. Um, you know, I, I struggled to lose weight about 10 years ago, um, following various diets. And, and I, I went to all the sort of mainstream places that you would find information on health and none of it helped me. Mm. Um, and then I just jumped on some forums and um, Facebook groups and discovered ketogenic dieting. And, and I, I lost a lot of weight and, and got my health back um, for a couple of years following that protocol. And it it led me to sort of look at things a little bit more critically and um, actually um, look at academic literature, look at what the science was saying and what the peer-reviewed studies were, were pointing to in terms of what could be optimal. Um, and I've always had a fascination in, I guess, um, you know, quantum biology and quantum physics from more of a um, sort of hobby level. Uh -huh. And um, I, I thought to myself that, you know, I feel great following this ketogenic diet, but I wanted to adopt more of a, an ancestral lifestyle. And that led me into discovering things about sort of you know, cold thermogenesis, EMFs and, and light. And, and light really took my fancy because it seemed to control everything from the food we ate um, to um, how we are, I guess, interacting on a day-to-day -day basis because of our hormones and how they're secreted. Um, and then that led me into sort of looking at circadian biology, which is um, basically how hormones are secreted at different times of the day based on how your body clock is um, entrained to the environment around it. Um, so I started reading a lot of journals on on light and it led me into obviously buying my first pair of blue light blocking glasses which I picked up from Amazon for about 10 quid um I popped them on and you know felt felt okay uh, my sleep improved a little bit um 
but then I, because I'm such a geek, I, I obviously bought myself a spectrometer. Um, you know, these things are several thousand pounds to buy. Um, and I started testing blue light glasses um, to see what frequencies of light they, they blocked. Um, and when I actually tested about 20 or 30 um, leading brands and, and some of the cheaper ones on, on Amazon and eBay, they weren't actually blocking in line with what the peer reviewed studies were saying you needed to block in order to have healthy eyes, healthy hormones, and optimal sleep. Right. Um, so we found out that most of our suppliers just get these lenses mass produced in China, shipped over, and then they know you know nothing about quantum biology and, and physics and how light works. So what we decided to do was we decided to make more of a premium brand. Um, so you know our glasses actually cost probably double what um, you know the nearest competitor would would charge for, for their glasses because we make them in Australia in an optics lab um, and we developed tints and um, special material to go inside of our three different lenses based on the exact frequencies you need to block at any given time of the day for optimal health and wellness so you know you I think the, the saying goes, you know, you, you, you buy cheap, you, you buy twice, but, um, you know, you, you buy a fair price, then, you know, you're, you're gonna only going to buy once. But, um, so it's about, you know, we, kind we, of about your search for optimal health at the end of the day, right? Yeah, it, exactly that, yeah. Everything to do with, I guess, my philosophy is to create um, an optimal self in, in myself, and I want to then empower others to be able to do that to themselves as well, um, albeit there's loads of different facets that make that um, make that up in, in one's lifestyle but light is a very big component of that and I wanted to be I guess the um, you know create the, the leading and, and most optimal products when it comes to I guess um, you know creating an optimal life through through optimal light management. Yeah. I love it I love it so going back to light then as it's so powerful the LEDs if you say that they have the highest blue spectrum where would we mostly find those I mean uh, computers laptops phones and you know where else yeah so you I split I always split it into two you've got the obvious offenders okay and the not so obvious offenders so the obvious offenders are your smartphone and people will say yeah but I have night mode on my smartphone mm. that's fine we've tested it in the lab it doesn't block all blue light so it's not going to do you any um, any favors after dark um, your laptop um, or your computer monitor is, is another um, obvious one um, people may have iris or flux installed which is a software that reduces blue light but again it doesn't block blue light so you know these are all very well you know having these softwares but they don't actually block the frequencies you need to be blocking mm. now um, another um, two obvious offenders are your house lights so you come home after work and you switch on one of your lamps or a house light that's blue light mm. or you'd switch on the tv um, and that has blue light mm. now some of the not so obvious offenders that will get you and a full of blue light are appliances so if you put your dishwasher on um, or your microwave or your printer um, or something like that it will emit blue light um, so they have little LEDs inserted in them if they're digital and you know blue and green light will come out of that and even a small fraction of that hitting your eye for a millisecond and you are going to suffer the uh, the consequences of, of I guess hormone disruptions and disruption car headlights um, street lamps yeah. Um, two other not so obvious. Um, your fridge as well is a massive offender. So typically people will eat after dark. I don't advocate doing that, but it's probably for a different conversation. Um, if you open your fridge um, door, there will be a light in there that's full of blue light. Um, mm. And yeah, so so there's a few that's sort of I not even so obvious. Thought of, but that's quite a powerful thing then, isn't it? So you open up the fridge door and you're m immediately sort of alert. So it makes you think... Maybe it stimulates your your cortisol, stim stimulates you to get hungry again, and then you want to eat more. Would that be? It certainly yeah? does. Yeah, absolutely. And it also stimulates something called. Well, it it does. It releases three hormones: blue light, um, cortisol um, is one of them, which is great during the day because you uh, want to feel alert and awake. But it also increases something called dopamine. Um, which is a feel-good hormone. So you open that fridge door and you're greeted by all that amazing food in there. Perhaps you've got some naughty food in there, that, like pudding or something. Never, or, not or, in uh, mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's going to stimulate you to eat more because it's going to raise dopamine as soon as that blue light hits your skin or your eyes. 
But also, and this is an interesting one that the academic literature has shown, it also increases insulin. Um, just short bursts of blue light can increase insulin. So, you know, you're going to get those. You might even be following a low carb diet. Yet if you open a, your fridge and get blasted by blue light, your insulin is going to rise and your blood sugar levels are going to rise regardless of what you're eating. That's just crazy. That's the most fascinating thing I've ever heard. Okay. That's ridiculous. Wow. Um, I mean, for me personally, I have to say, with regards to the LED, the most offending place, I can't bear supermarkets, um, the underground, gyms, airports, you know, offices. Whenever I have a meeting and they've got those strobe lights on, I'm just like, please, would you mind turning the lights off so that we can have a, like a proper interview? I used to work in an office and I'd get like that, um, like a butterfly effect across my cheeks and my nose around in the afternoon. I don't know if it has anything to do, but I was very sensitive. I knew that. And every time I fly on the planes, I used to get it too. But since I've got your glasses, it doesn't happen anymore. I literally the other day sat in a classroom to do some studying uh, at the College of Medicine from 9 o'clock until 6 p.m. We were in the classroom and I was wearing the glasses all day and my skin was perfect. I didn't have any any issues whatsoever. So thanks for that. <laughs> no problem at all. Yeah, they, they are terrible when when you go outside the home at least with inside the home you can control the light um hygiene fairly well um if, if you've got the power to do so but it's actually when you leave the house that it's it's typically some of the worst like during the day shopping malls have very bright lights for a reason and that's to increase dopamine to make people um feel alert and awake and want to continue to shop for, for long periods of time um and also dopamine's continually being pumped out um, and around the body you're, you're going to feel amazing being in these places um you know it causes addiction for a lot of people it's like the, um, whole, it's like the whole vegas thing as well isn't it with all the, the lights the bright lights the big city it makes you like oh, wow and you know, just keep going all, all the time all the time so if we're looking then about exposure from these artificial lights to our hormones let's delve a bit more into that for men and women how does it exactly affect our hormones thank you so much yeah exactly so it's um look it affects men and women very similarly um you know that there are slight variances um because obviously uh, you know male and, and females secrete different hormones but for different um different situations but i guess you know as we alluded to earlier um you know cortisol levels are, are going to be spiked by blue light and you know like i said this is this is fine during the day when you're outside you get it from the sun and cortisol spikes naturally in the morning so it's very high upon awakening you get the cortisol awakening response um and then within about four hours after that it starts to subside down into the evening at which point when it when cortisol after dark hits zero you can start producing something um a hormone called melatonin which is a powerful antioxidant which helps fight and scavenge free radicals and, and reduce inflammation but also so helps us um, get into to deep and restorative REM sleep. Um, now, blue light's raising cortisol, okay? So that's fine, you know, when you're outside during the day. Um, but when it comes to solar noon, you want to slowly be reducing the blue light. So you need to be, you know, filtering it down, wearing appropriate eyewear if you're surrounded by artificial light. Because the sunlight actually drops in blue light as you go nearer to the end of the day bar one anomaly which i'll talk about in a, in, a, in, a, in a short while so if for instance you come home after after dark and switch on any kind of device that gives out blue light or your house lights you're telling your body to keep cortisol levels high and over time high levels of cortisol continually can lead to things like stress anxiety and depression we're seeing it a lot more in kids and teenagers and, and people in their 20s or 30s these days um and the reason being is that cortisol levels are continually high, which is um, causing that chronic stress and um, uh, and leading to anxiety and depression, etc. Not because we're, we're all on our phones all the time as well, right? So that makes it worse. Yeah, absolutely. Getting the blue light, dopamine hits, and it's yeah, it's it's and that coupled with things like notifications and likes, you know, it's just a dopamine overload as well as as the stress of cortisol. Um, the big one for women, for me, is thyroid function. Um, the thyroid is, is located very, very close to the skin 
um, about two or three millimeters beneath the skin. Um, and it's the main driver of hormones in, in all of us, but, but predominantly, um, you know, women um, have a lot of hormones that are produced in, in the pituitary gland um, and in the thyroid. Um, now, it's extremely sensitive to blue light. And the reason being is there's a lot of melanopsin receptors in that area, which are blue light receptors at the 480 nanometer range. And, um, you know, a lot of women we're seeing now have a rise of hyperthyroidism and, yeah. and um, have photos. Yeah. And the reason, you know, I, I believe that this could be the case is that, um, you know, they're working more in offices these days, um, you know, back in 30 or 40 years ago, that I guess the, the, the female of the family unit would typically stay at home and, and look yeah. after the children, yeah. whereas now they're actually working and exposing that thyroid mm. to blue light from their laptop and the office environment constantly. Now, men seem to not have so much of an issue with it because of two things. They have an Adam's apple, um, and which obviously helps in, in protecting it a little bit, but also they wear um, shirts and tie in the office quite a bit, which covers it, um, and also beards are very fashionable now, which helps to block the blue, whereas women, are, their neckline is a lot more exposed when it comes to, um, uh, comes to work attire and, and sitting in the office. So that's a big one that really affects women. So the way to counterbalance that is, is, is to wear a scarf, just a light silk scarf around your neck when you're exposing yourself to, to your laptop or your computer screen because um, that's going to have a big effect on, on, on your hormones. Um, look, it affects every hormone at every level. I mean, we, we spoke about um, insulin, you know, just blue light on its own can uh, increase insulin, um, which causes rises in blood sugar. So you don't want to be eating food under artificial light because you're more likely to store it as fat. You're better off eating outside where there's a balanced spectrum of light and it doesn't increase insulin as much. Ooh, and uh, a lot of us are offenders on that one. We eat a yeah, TV, you know, sitting, you know, playing with our phone and all sorts of things. So, oh, that's if you were wearing your glasses, would that help? Would it help with uh, insulin or is it just because it's the exposure from all your skin? Yes, yes and no. It would help, but it wouldn't be optimal. Um, so to be optimal would be eating outside. Um, if you couldn't eat outside, then eating with the blue light glasses on would help. Yeah. But to go one step further, eating with the blue light glasses on under artificial light, covering all of your skin as well, because your skin is also sensitive to blue light and, and has its own clock system independent of your master clock as well um so what that means is you, you know you can block the blue light from hitting your eyes and you can get optimal eye health and you can get good melatonin secretion but if your skin's exposed you um you're you're speeding up the clock mechanism within your skin causing aging um, and also not allowing your skin to go into recovery mode because your skin needs darkness um which defined in this conversation is the absence of blue and green light after dark to go into repair mode. So our skin is never in repair mode. It's always in the active circadian phase, which is under light. So, you know, what a lot of people blame is UV light for skin cancers, yeah. whereas, you know, we need UV light to synthesize vitamin D during the day and any kind of damage that that may cause if we are overexposed to UV light, because overexposure can cause damage to the skin, we're then bathing in artificial blue light after dark when our skin, in theory, should be recovering um, any UV damage that's occurred during the day. This is just crazy. Wow, that is insane to think about, all the damage. Because it's not like a tiny bit of exposure. It's things that we're doing as, as we get older, you know, everything tops up. You know, I always say we have a bucket. And it just gets more and more, you know, it fills up more and more as we get older, whether it's toxins or you know, different things in our life. So overexposure to this blue light all the time, you'll start to notice the difference as you get older, right? Absolutely. You'll see it in, in, in a accelerated aging in, in the skin, wrinkles yeah. coming quicker. And, you know, the, the, the measure to counteract that um, is, is obviously ideally not having any artificial blue light after dark and having red light in, in your house. Mm. But, um, you know, you, you can also use red light therapy as well. So you can buy devices that emit wavelengths both visible and invisible. Um, so 660 nanometers in the red range and 850 nanometers in the near infrared range, which will actually restore any damage caused by blue light during the day. Um, but, you know, this is a good fix, but, you know, you'd have to do that every night for about 20 minutes each night to be able to 
re, re, create a, a restorative and, and anti-inflammatory effect on the skin. So that's great to do. Yeah. Um, but better hack typically is the prevention side of things, which is to try and get some, you know, you don't have to replace all the lights in your house, but just try and get some salt lamps or some um, or some red um, non-flicker light bulbs in some of the lamps around your house, or maybe put some candles on at night sometimes as well, or it's winter now in the UK soon, so, you know, get get the fire on, and um, that's a good source of red light that can help heal. Mm, yeah, that, that's actually true, a fire, a fire is a good thing, or oh, get your glasses, even better, you know, so mm. you've got to all do that, yeah. that's for sure. Um, so I'm yeah. thinking, you know, because then, then I, I always, I'm a big fan of actual daylight, sunlight. I love to get in the sun. I think just the feeling of sun on my skin is extraordinary. So, and there's so many people are like, oh, don't go in the sun, you know, it's aging and all this kind of stuff. But actually blue light is probably just even more as, uh, as, as aging as that, surely. Yeah, well, blue light's more aging because it's isolated. So the, the, the thing is with, with the sun, okay, is that... It's a context thing with the sun, okay? The sun is good and the sun is bad, okay? It depends how you, as an individual, utilises the sun. Yeah. So if you utilise yeah. it properly, you will have no anti-aging effects, you'll look youthful and you'll be extremely healthy, disease-free. If you don't if you burn, use it, basically. You know, if you don't yeah, burn, so yeah. if you use it incorrectly, you're, you're going to have major problems. Now, the difference is, using the sun correctly is basically being up with the sunrise. Now, you want to be up with the sunrise, watching the sunrise, because it entrains your body clock. It starts the clock ticking that tells your body what time of the day it is and to secrete hormones at the correct time of day throughout the day and the evening. Right, that's um, circadian also, rhythm, right? Yeah. That's correct, okay. yeah. And also at that time of the day, because UV light isn't present for about an hour in the morning, we actually build something in our... Um, in our skin called melanin. Now, melanin is a natural pigment um, that's found in the body that when it is stimulated and you create more of it, you develop something called a, a suntan, okay? Now, what happens is once you build melanin in the skin, melanin melanin is a filterer and absorber of ultraviolet light. So when you go out in the sun when ultraviolet UV light is, is present, the melanin you've built up in the morning actually protects you from from burning and from causing skin damage from UV light. Um, and at the sunset, when you're out at sunset, the same is true to what happened in the morning. The UV light drops down and more restorative high frequencies of invisible infrared light um, start to be um being down by the sun on your body and what did we say earlier about infrared light and red light it is yeah. healing so we need to be out. yeah so you need to be out in the morning in the evening sun and you know you can then be out in the middle of the day if you wanted to um however we've got to learn from um i guess animal models as well that a lot of animals will apart from cold-blooded animals will seek the shade during the ho hottest parts of the day typically mm -hmm. between about 11 and 3 o'clock. So mm. we shouldn't be out there baking in the sun between those periods of time. You should be out at sunrise 6 a.m. till about 11 a.m. on and off, however, whatever your lifestyle will allow. Yeah. Maybe seek shade between 11 and 3 and then from, say, 3 onwards, be back out in the sun again when the, the frequencies of light are, um, are more beneficial and, and less likely to cause any damage. So we've always got to be apply context to sun exposure. The sun is absolutely fantastic, but it would be very careless of me if I said don't wear sunscreen go out in the sun whenever you want sure. because it just w would not work at all um you just have to be sensible about it and do it according to nature like let's let's just say our ancestors in the paleo um paleolithic um era they wouldn't have hunted during the hottest parts of the day you know they would have hunted it was cooler in the mornings they would have had much more stamina um and they would have um you know f uh, gone out hunting in the evenings um and they so, didn't have you know, sunscreen no exactly they did not <laughs> yeah exactly and they they yeah, it's, 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 it's actually, um, you know, logical when you think about yeah, it that, um, yeah, right. you know, I would like to think from the ancestral point of view, but um, yeah, the, the evidence is clear that, you know, if you're out in the sun in the mornings and evenings and, and limiting exposure during the, but not eradicating it during the high UV parts of the day, then, you know, you're, you're going to be fine, but you, you need to be out in the UV light as well, because to create something called vitamin D, which is, um, you know, a massive antidote to 
or major um, metabolic um, diseases, mm. you need ultraviolet light. You can't synthesize vitamin D without UV light. So if you're putting sunscreen and sunglasses on and going outside um, and, and not letting your, your skin see UV light without any cream or clothing on it or your eyes see it without sunglasses on, then right. you're going to have a hard time producing vitamin D, which is needed for optimal health. I totally agree. Yeah, it's a very powerful hormone, vitamin D, definitely. So uh, it's 100% it's clear that your glasses need to be worn by everyone. So let's talk about your fabulous products and more specifically. You have three different types for adults in various frame styles. Can you elaborate on these and when exactly people should wear each type? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, our three lenses um, uh, are found in, in our kids and, and adults collection, but we can come on to more about it in a bit. So there's three different lens types, okay? So the first one is a red lens, okay? Now, they're red because they need to be able to block um, between 400 and 550 nanometers, which is all the blue light for those listening and majority of green light. You have to block 100% of the light in that range. If you block 99%, you might as well not wear the glasses. So our glasses have been tested independently to block 100% in that range. Now, the, the red lenses are to be worn as soon as the sun sets okay. until you're ready to go to bed. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be surprised if anyone can last about any more than four hours of wearing those red glasses without the need um, and the, the really strong need to go to sleep because they... Um, lower cortisol to nothing mm. and they then start optimizing the secretion of melatonin which we need to um, help us sleep and also help to get us um, out of a state of inflammation from you know various um, issues during the day um, they're also great for jet lag management as well um, which is which is really good um, when you're traveling through different time zones yeah, and what now I we find have... actually when I wear them sorry to interrupt you is that when by the time I do get to bed and you know I'm, I'm in bed I fall asleep a lot quicker like I'm just out I'm gone you know and I love that because then you have and I feel like I have a much deeper sleep as well like I just go so deep and it's it's lovely yeah absolutely that's the that's proving that the melatonin is is being secreted more wearing those glasses um and that's a really good point you made as well like the latency of sleep wearing those red glasses the sleep plus glasses before you go to, to bed is huge like you're not going to go to bed and toss and turn for a long time you are going to hit that hay and need to sleep very very quickly so two or three minutes you'll get to sleep yeah. um during the day we have two types of um daytime glasses so the first pair are, are a clear, they, they appear to be a clear pair of glasses. And what they do is they filter down blue light because you don't want to block blue light during the day because you need it. Like we said earlier, you need cortisol to be higher during the day. Okay. Um, okay. Just you don't want too much of blue light. You know, you want to bring it down, balance it with the other spectrums that are found in the blue light, um, found in the LED backlit devices. Yeah. So our yeah. clear lenses will filter it down by about 30 percent, which stops the blue light bombarding our eyes, causing digital eye strain, dry, itchy eyes, headaches, migraines, um, and generally feeling tired from using blue light um, devices. Um, you know, the, during the day, you should always try and get as much natural light as you can, but the glasses are great if you're spending long periods of time working at a computer um, or if you're suffering from dry, itchy eyes from using a computer or, or tension headaches. Yeah. Um, they're also great for working in an office, and there's office lighting as well because it will filter filter the light down um, to a to a good degree. Um, and the third pair we have is um, a daytime pair, but it's blue light um, blocking, part like partial blue light blocking, but also color therapy. Now. We wanted to do something that no one else had, had ever done, which was take these amazing color therapy glasses. So color therapy glasses are used for people that have like, you know, seasonal affective disorder, stress, anxiety, depression. Um, and they're used, um, you know, to invoke, a, I guess, a, a response in the, the patient that could basically uplift their mood, make them feel happier. But we wanted to take that one step further by fusing that technology with blue light blocking. So we found that yellow, a specific frequency of, of different, a specific color of yellow, shade of yellow per se, um, basically increased feelings of, of happiness and improved mood in people 
in studies with seasonal affective disorder, which is very common in, in the UK. But we also found that what raises and feelings of anxiety and low mood was specifically the frequencies of blue light between 400 and 450 nanometers, so half of the lower end of the blue spectrum. So what we did was we created a lens that blocks that entire lower blue spectrum, puts the color technology in, so you've got the double whammy of reducing down the, the um, frequencies of light that are messing up your hormones and causing the SAD, but also putting the colour therapy in to really give that boost of uplifting mood and uplifting energy in, in the individual. And they have been a huge success because, you know, you're going into winter now in the UK where it's dark and you put these glasses on and it feels like the sun's shining outside. It's it's absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, I, will, I will vouch for that, actually. Every time I put them on, my husband's like, oh, you're wearing your happy glasses again, you know, <laughs> because they do, they lift my mood. And I actually wear them a lot. Uh, I suffer a lot from anxiety of fear of flying. And when I'm on a plane, I find that they really, really help as well because they just keep me so much calmer. I mean, whether it's in my head or not, but I, uh, that's what I've definitely found. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's absolutely spot on. And that's exactly what they're designed to do there to, to settle people, make them feel very, you know, well and happy within themselves when wearing them. And um, yeah, they're, they're very, very popular, and very soothing, you know, even even they're even very good for migraines as well. Like if you have chronic migraines, they, they take out even more blue than the clear glasses. So, you know, if you're really sensitive to blue light, which means that you get frequent migraines, anxiety, depression and stress. Um, they're all symptoms of, of sensitivity to blue light then you know go that extra mile and, and wear yellow lenses during the day for sure the one thing I have found about your glasses actually Andy is that when I wear them and then when I take them off I really notice for example if I take if I'm wearing my red glasses and I'm watching the tv and I take them off you can really see the blue light I never really noticed yes. it before but it suddenly really like hits you and you're like wow so you, you know, by, by not wearing them and then suddenly put, putting them back on again, you, 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 feel, you, see, you can see the difference. You can see and feel quite instantly the difference. You can see them working, basically. Yeah, that's very true. It's, it's always a, a good one, a, little, a fun little sort of hack to look at. Once you've got used to them, uh, you know, one night, just, just pop them up and have a look underneath and everything will appear blue. It's scary. It's really quite scary. Yeah. You're like, wow, I've been doing that to myself for all these years. Yeah. Awful, awful. So if we're looking at the age group, what age group of people need to be thinking about blue light and their effects? I mean, is it all age groups? I know you do glasses for kids as well, but is it important for older people too? Or Yeah, absolutely. Like everyone should be wearing them, um, you know, from, from from probably from about four years and upwards. Um, you know, kids are, are extremely susceptible to blue light. Their retinas are about 91%, I believe, was the average in the studies I've read. Um, ninety one percent more sensitive to blue. Um, so you you know the fact that you know at schools these days lessons are taught on iPads and digital whiteboards. Um, you know you want to be protecting your kids young um, and their developing eyes. That's that's for sure. Um, you know anyone that's serious about you know having optimal hormones and sleep and, and health and wellness then needs to be wearing these glasses whether they're in their 20s or in their 80s um, and you know if you've if you're wearing prescription glasses at the moment it means your eyes are being damaged by blue light so you know you want if you've not got any sort of blue filter protection in your lenses and a lot of the optometrists will um, say that they can put blue light filtering lenses in, um, but we've tested the, the big players um, that are out there and their blue light filtering lenses focus on a portion of light that actually isn't present in the blue spectrum in um, in their glasses and in LED, LED lights. So they focus on something called violet light, which doesn't actually exist in backlit digital devices, um, which is between 380 and about 420 nanometers. Um, so, you know, they might put these anti-reflective coatings and, you know, anti-blue filters into your lenses, but they're actually not doing anything. Um, they're not filtering any of the harmful blue out of your um, LED backlit devices, which is a shame. Um, and look, everyone is exposed to blue light after dark these days there's no getting away from it and you know if, if if you haven't slept well or don't feel like you've got a lot of energy like these, these glasses don't take a few weeks or a few months it's one use you put them on and you are out like a light and feeling amazing the next day yeah it is it's instant so basically it's never too early to start and it's never too late to start wearing your blue blocks <laughs>
Correct. Now, if we think about quality, for me, quality is everything in life. If I eat meat, it has to be pasture-raised, organic, the best I can find. You know, I sell caviar as a private dealer. I won't take anything that comes from China, you know, blah, blah. My father always said, basically, if you're going to do a job, do it properly or don't do it at all. And you at Blue Blocks have definitely done your job superbly. I mean, what I love about Blue Blocks is your passion for this quality. And you test all the lenses and they really do what they do, what you want them to do, don't they? And that's a very important thing for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're not in the business to put profits first. We're in the business to provide optimal, um, you know, and that's why the, the cost of producing the product that we sell is, is very high compared to something that costs $5 to manufacture in the thousands in, in a Chinese factory. So, you know, we're, we're optical grade quality um, lenses, um, prescription glasses, not a problem with any of the filters or, or reading glasses as well. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's our mission to provide the most optimal products that we can. And, and, you know, it doesn't matter how much that costs us. And, and we spent, you know, tens of thousands of dollars on R&D to get this right. And we want to make sure that people have the access and, uh, you know, to these high quality products. But also part of our mission is, is you know, myself speaking on, on multiple shows like this amazing show we're speaking on now um, to actually educate people that not all blue light glasses are created equal and if you want optimal you've got to find a brand that can explain and talk about it the way I'm talking about it to, to everyone now. Definitely I mean that's just it. so many people only think you know that healthy life is about nutrition and exercise but it's so much more than that I mean this is this whole talk is just mind-blowing so I mean I I have to say that, you know, blue blocks, they might be a bit more expensive than those like Chinese takeoffs, but being evidence based, they are worth every single penny. And you also have a wide variety of chic, fashionable frames for the customer to choose from. There's even on your website this uh, face shape guide so that people can go in and pick the best uh, frames and for their for their shaped face which is great and the boxes that the glasses come in those are very slick andy well done very very nicely designed no i appreciate that and, and if there's any like we've got about 20 frames to choose from from the website and if people still can't find a frame they're interested in then we do a send your own frame service so if you've got an old pair of sunglasses um, you can send them to us and we can put our lens technology in there for you. Um, and I also wanted to say as well that, you know, we are Australian based, um, but we ship for free around the world. We ship to free for free to the UK. Um, so don't worry about that. It only takes, you know, you take anywhere between two days and, and maybe, you know, 10 days to arrive, depending on what shipping um, option you choose. But for free shipping, you know, you'll have your glasses within a week or two. Um, and you don't need to worry about VAT and customs um, duties because we take care of that our end as well. So there's no nasty surprises there. So I know a lot of people overseas, you know, worry that they have yeah. to pay a load of these on already expenses glasses. But we factor that into the price and, and we cover that for you. My gosh, that's just phenomenal. I mean, your customer service is outstanding. I have to give it to you guys. You're very passionate you. about it. Even, you know, you could even if people have a question about their light or what glasses, you can just they just use your contact form on your website i think it is isn't it and then it just you go yep. you you're happy to talk to them and and chat and find the right the right the right light for them and the right pair of glasses it's it's phenomenal yeah absolutely myself and my wife katie answer all questions about optimizing light ourselves um i guess you know we, we've grown very quickly um and eventually we'll, we'll have a team that will be trained by us to answer those questions in the same level of detail that that we answer them in um but until you know we are ready to train the individuals that are currently working for us then you know we we will answer those specific questions personally um, we don't mind doing it it's you know it, it's like you know, flows out once we, once we start writing. And, you know, I've sent, I've sent a few essays back to people where I, I probably should only really write a couple of paragraphs, but, um, you know, I'm just so passionate to help people. And everyone's light environment is so different. So I do encourage people that, you know, if you're jumping on the website and this is new to you guys and new or, or you know, you want a bit more information, just drop us an email saying, yeah. heard you on, yeah. on, you know, this amazing show. Um, would love to ask Andy and Kate a little bit more about my light environment and then just start writing about your environment. And we'll come back to you personally and say, well, stop doing this, do this, do this free hack here. Mm -hmm. These are the glasses that will best suit you and here's how to apply that to your life. So it's well worth doing. 
super commendable. And also, I have to say your ethos for giving back. Uh, for every pair of blue block glasses that are sold, you sponsor a brand new pair of reading glasses to an individual in need, helping them to experience the world differently. I mean, that's just, just awesome. really is. No, I appreciate it. It's dear to my heart. I've always been um, involved in charity work, and, and when I started this this business a few years ago, I wanted to to start off by by giving back. You know, I, I I love to empower people to give them the right information, and you know, they can then if they can afford it, they, they buy the product, which is a, a valuable investment into their health. Sure. Um, but you know, there's people that can't afford that as well, and and you know, some of these. Um, case studies that we've seen with with Restoring Vision, who are the, the not-for-profit we work with. Um, you know, th th this is like, say, a, a, a mum that is sewing to make, um, you know, enough money to feed her kids um, and support her family, but her eyes have deteriorated because of the blue light in, in the factories and, and the, the horrible conditions they're working in, and all they need is some reading glasses um, with magnification to be able to continue working and providing for their family, and they can't afford it. So, you know, for every pair that we sell, we, we gift a pair of reading glasses um, or the monetary equivalent to, to Restoring Vision who then have these reading glasses and then go out on these missions and put them on people in, in the developing world that need them. So we can, you know, just empower everyone and, and ensure that everyone has access to quality eye care and, and can manage light accordingly. And, and, you know, whether it be, you know, Joe Bloggs from London that, that you know, works in an office and can afford all three pairs of the glasses or whether it be, you know, someone from um, a factory in the developing world that just needs a pair of reading glasses to, to improve their quality of life and provide. No, I think, I think that's wonderful. I really do. And, you know, it's, it, I think a lot of people are not considering this uh, as an essential thing to do in their life, not looking at their light, but it could actually be that missing factor because so many people as well are suffering with things, all sorts of problems with their health. And they've tried this, they've tried that, they've tried this, they've tried that. But, you know, it's all, you've got to add all everything together. You've got to pack it all in together. So I think getting your glasses and knowing that you're doing good for your health and doing a good thing for, you know, someone else in the world that's getting a new pair of reading glasses. I think it's great. Well done, Andy. Yeah, I wish more companies would do it. I really do. Yeah. But, you know, when I, I'm sure more will follow, which is what we want. Definitely. So let's talk about that light a little bit more. One thing I have a question is the blue light, can it actually deteriorate the eye itself and your sight over time? Yes, it can. So as we sort of alluded to briefly earlier, um, the blue spectrum of light, it doesn't matter if it's from the sun or, or from um, artificial light, blue is very high energy and it causes cell damage. Um, so it, it, yes, it gives us that cortisol and it makes us feel alert, but it also causes eye damage. So when you're outside, we said the red light um, from being outside will, will restore that damage. Um, but artificial light doesn't have the red, so it doesn't restore that damage. So what, what happens over time is more and more blue light goes into your, your retina. You're going to cause things like macular degeneration and you know people will end up having to wear glasses and, and become short-sighted because it will impair their vision because the blue light is damaging a lot of cells in the eye. Now, one of the biggest, I guess, sources or uh, biggest hubs in the body where the mitochondria are located, if not the biggest, is actually in the, um, in, in the eye. And the mitochondria are, are powerhouses to our body. They, they provide ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate, which actually powers us to move and, and actually, you know, speak and do what we're doing now and walk and, and all those kind of things. Um, and if we're destroying those in the eye, then we're going to be causing, you know, more mitochondrial death, I guess, throughout the body as well, because it's very, you know, they're found in the skin, they're found um, in the brain, they're found everywhere in, in, in the body. Um, but one thing that blue light does that is really, really um, detrimental in, in the eye is it destroys vitamin A, um, which is um, utilized to actually help with the, I guess, the, tran I'm trying to think of a, a clear way to put this, mm -hmm. the transmission of um, UV light when hitting the eye, um, pairing with DHA, which is located in the eye, and then causing a, a DC electric current, which actually charges our, our mitochondria. So it impairs with that. And, and the fact that vitamin A, which, you know, people, you know, my mum used to say, eat your carrots, you can see in the dark, because mm -hmm. they contain a lot of vitamin A, you start destroying that, you start 
impairing your eyesight and your ability to, to see, you know, in different lighting situations. So, you know, blue light is not just causing eye damage per se in terms of macular degeneration. It's destroying vital vitamins in the eye as well, which are used for, I guess, basic eye function and, and cell recharging through, I guess, transcriptions of UV light through DHA. Sorry, that's the simplest way I could put that. No, no, I got it. Yeah, that, that's just fascinating. But I'm thinking now, so for example, my auntie, um, she used to work a lot of like night shifts. She was a midwife in the Middle East for years. And she spent a lot of time in front of a computer, you know, with um, in, in her nursing outfit. So again, her, her neck would not be covered. Um, and, you know, she did the night shift. So normally you'd be asleep, but you're actually working. This is the case for a lot of people, right? Um, and yep. now she is actually partially blind. She suffered from breast cancer. Um, obviously there's hundreds of causation factors to her issues, but I don't think we, you know, she would ever have thought that light could have been one of them, but it probably was, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And the, the issue with night shift work is that you're taking, um, an animal, um, the human animal, um, that needs to be active during the day and making them active at night. So we've evolved to be creatures of the day. Um, and all our hormones are secreted in line with our circadian rhythms. And our natural circadian rhythm is to be awake during the day and asleep when it's dark. Um, and if you flip that on its head, you're going to have all sorts of hormonal issues, um, lower melatonin, higher cortisol. Um, you know, it's not just working under those artificial lights uh, that are causing the issue. It's the disruption that's causing to your circadian clock mechanisms. Um, and, you know, it's very, very clear. I mean, it's without a shadow of a doubt um, from the academic studies that, you know, people that work night shifts have shorter lifespans. They have more um, chronic disease like, um, you know, uh, heart disease, Alzheimer's, dementia, obesity than those that um, work you know, the reverse, they work during the day and they sleep during the night. Um, you know, and it's, it's sad because a lot of the professions that require night shift work, and my dad was in one of them, who's a fireman, are very um, much, you know, public servants, they're in healthcare, they're in helping people. And, you know, that they're almost giving up a healthy life themselves to, um, you know, to help others. Yeah, which is really sad. And, and there are hacks you can do for night shift that, that can mitigate some of the issues, but ultimately you're still going to cause yourself major issues um, working night shift. And if you can get out of it and it's not essential, then then I highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, they, you know, someone that works night shift would, would need to wear, you know, summer glow yellow glasses. The, the blue light clear glasses wouldn't cut it because you know it's you want to be taking the extreme measures when you're working night shifts and you know any moment of sunlight you can get that's not going to interrupt your sleep you need to be getting because you know if you work a night shift go straight home not see any sunlight go to bed and then get up for your night shift again like you're going to have all sorts of deficiencies of vitamin d you're not going to have enough uv light going into your eyes to create that dc electric current and you know you're going to you're going to run yourself to an early grave or, or you know a very uh, you know unpleasant disease by by doing so later in life and you know you mentioned you know, your, your auntie going almost blind and, and um, you know, breast cancer. And that would have been, you know, a, a high contributing factor to that would have been a mismatched circadian clock mechanism caused partially by exposure to blue light, um, probably high levels of EMF as well, but also not getting enough sunlight. Yeah, yeah. So it's everything all in. Have there been any case studies where you've uh, of the effect of blue light on the amount of estrogen in the body specifically? Uh, yeah, it's, it's funny if you should mention that I'm, I'm into research at the moment um, on a couple of podcasts going to be talking about reproductive health um, and, you know, sex hormones with, um, with with a few different shows coming up. So people have to listen out for them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, it, it, it will impair all, all, all the hormones um, if, if you're exposing yourself to um, to the wrong types of light at the wrong times of the day. Um, you know, it affects testosterone in men as well. Um, and also, um, interesting study I posted today in, in um, one of my groups, Light and Health, um, which is worth checking out as well, that um, a mismatched circadian rhythm, which again is, is main driver of a mismatched circadian rhythm is inappropriate light management, actually decreased um, sperm quality and count in men. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a topic that, you know, I'd be lying if I said I'm well-versed in, but 
I'd be honest in saying that I am, you know, well and truly knee deep into the research at the moment, and I'm probably a couple of weeks away from drawing my conclusions. So, okay. you know, it's it's probably something that I would talk about in in a lot more detail in in my next podcast that I'll be um be on uh, in various locations. Yeah, no, I'd love to know more about that because uh, one of my questions is actually, you know, I'm busy trying to get pregnant, so um, you know, in in terms of for mums to be, it's obviously very an important factor, the light for them and the baby, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so for one study I can talk about is there was a really interesting case study um, that came out um, probably six weeks ago. It was a brand new study um, they conducted on uh, breast milk being a type of chrono nutrition. So what that means is that um, they typically a baby isn't born with a circadian rhythm. It takes about three to six months to form. Um, so you know, if you're exposing your newborn to artificial light in the middle of the night, then you know that's not going to help matters in forming a, a, a correct circadian rhythm. But what was interesting was they measured the hormone content of mother's breast milk that was pumped during the day versus when it was pumped after dark. What they found was that the breast milk that was pumped during the day was extremely high in cortisol, and the breast milk that was pumped after dark was extremely high in melatonin and tryptophan. Um, and melatonin and tryptophan are needed for, for good sleep and, and um, circadian entrainment, um, and cortisol is obviously needed during the day to keep people awake. So it was really interesting because if mums are, it was, it was interesting twofold. Because if mums are pumping their breast milk and not labelling the times of day they pumped it, mm -hmm. they might be getting up at 2 a.m. to do the night feed um, to, to the little one and administering a high dose of milk containing cortisol. And what does cortisol do? It creates the awakening wow. response, which yeah. keeps them awake. Yeah, that's incredible um, what you're it, saying. Sorry, sorry. That's yeah, I know, no, it doesn't make sense, right? Um, but the second facet of this, and they didn't mention it in the study, but something that got me thinking was this all leads up to childbirth. This isn't just like this random thing where there's a load of melatonin and tryptophan in the night milk and a load of cortisol in the day milk. Um, you know, if you want to optimize that as a mother, then you need to be taking light hygiene extremely seriously because you want to be producing cortisol during the day and you want to be producing as much melatonin and tryptophan after dark as you can. So it's reflected in the breast milk that you're giving your child at specific times of the day. So you really need to be labeling that breast milk. If And, you know, if you're, you know, and it's not for everyone breastfeeding, I get that, but if you're giving your baby formula as well, it may take slightly longer for the baby to develop the circadian rhythm because it's the milk doesn't contain the hormones that breast milk will to help entrain the, the infant's body clock. So they coined it chrono nutrition, which is really interesting, and we hope to see some more uh, more studies on it as well. But yeah, it made complete sense when I read it for sure. Yeah, now that makes. 100% sense. I'm definitely going to be wearing my glasses. Well, I wear them all the time anyway, but I'm going to wear them even more now. So, <laughs> Yeah, definitely. absolutely. And then also get a get in, in the baby's room or, or in your bedroom, yeah. obviously the baby will see yeah. with you to start with, is, is get red lights red light. um, okay. in those rooms because the red light won't disrupt melatonin for you yeah. um, and it won't yeah. disrupt melatonin for the baby. So, you know, have the red light in the bedroom, um, have your blue blockers on if you need to get up and give night feeds and mm -hmm. make sure if you're breastfeeding, which, um, you know, if, obviously optimal if you are, then either, um, you know, pre, yeah, don't just pump your breast milk during the day. Like, you know, you might have to stay up till midnight or two in the morning or something to do it, to, to do the batch for the week. But, um, you know, you've got that milk then, which will be administered at the correct time and, and definitely label it. And, you know, if you're going for a night feed or dad's going for a night feed, then make sure they pick the bottle up that is the night produced milk. Otherwise, you're going to be pumping the baby for the cortisol, which, you know, awake ultimately... all night. Yeah, it's amazing. It's so simple night, exactly. when, you, when you think about it, really, isn't it? It's so yeah. simple. Gosh. For sure. Fascinating. Okay, so... Um, now, I want to talk a little bit more about your glasses. So in everyday life, I'm going to give you some scenarios. Can you tell us which glasses you would suggest to be wearing for each case scenario, yeah? Absolutely, okay. yes, sure. So working in an office all day with no, with no windows, uh, looking at a computer screen. Yellow summer glow lenses. Okay, on a computer, by a window with natural light through the window, but on the computer. Blue light computer glasses. Blue light, yeah, okay, so that's the clear yeah. one. Flying, the clear one yeah. flying on a plane, would it matter day, night? 
yeah, it's a little bit more complicated. I, I would suggest people check out my ultimate biohacking guide to jet lag. It depends what direction you're traveling and how many time zones. Okay. I would suggest just to keep it basic, um, sync yourself to the time zone you're traveling to immediately. And if it's daytime in that time zone where the yellow summer glows, and if it's nighttime in the location you're traveling to where the red sleep plus. Okay, perfect. So what about shopping in a supermarket or a shop department store in the daytime? Ideally, yellow summer glow, but I know some people feel a bit wary about wearing yellow summer glow in, in public. So blue light clear computer glasses will help. But if you want to be optimal, which I'm sure we all do, then yellow summer glow for those, those places. There's too much blue light there. Okay. Uh, having breakfast, lunch or dinner with friends in a restaurant? Uh, if it's after dark, sleep plus. Okay. And trust me, like they're a great conversation starter. So <laughs> They are. They really but, are. I'll give you that. Yeah. And people are honestly that interested. They they look at you a bit. <coughs> excuse me. They look at you a bit funny because they think you're wearing sunglasses. Mm. But once you explain to them what they are, they honestly they want to know more. Um, if it's during the day, then I would recommend probably blue light computer glasses because um, typically restaurants during the day aren't that badly artificially lit. Okay. Uh, walking outside when it's sunny. <laughs> Nothing. Perfect. Walking outside when it's overcast, you know, like a, a dull British day. You remember those? Probably not. Yeah, really absolutely. <laughs> yeah, if, if you don't suffer from something called SAD or anxiety or depression, then nothing. Okay. Um, but if you're really feeling down and low and, and anxious, then summer glow is, is fine. Um, typically, I, I don't say to wear the glasses outside, but if someone has a chronic hormonal issue or sensitive to blue light, then the yellow summer glow outside when it's a gloomy British day is, is totally acceptable. The happy glasses, yeah, perfect. Uh, yeah. What about working on a laptop at night? Sleep plus, definitely. Sleep. Um, depends what you're doing on the laptop. I mean, ideally you wouldn't be working on it at all or being on it at all, but um, you know, if you're a graphic designer, you're not gonna have a very good time using our glasses after dark. Um, so you probably wanna do your editing during the day outside, um, so you're not, you know, distorting colour, but anyone that's just going on their laptop to do a bit of typing or a bit of internet shopping, then get the Sleep Plus glasses on and get a scarf around your neck so you don't uh, blow out your thyroid. Yeah, that's the same for for phones or any kind of, you know, smart device, basically. A TV, everything, yeah? Yes. Okay, and what about uh, if you're working on a laptop but it's a sunny day and you're in the garden? Nothing. No, oh, nice. Okay, perfect. What about cooking at home, obviously daytime and then nighttime, obviously night. And as soon as it's dark, it's the sleep glasses always, no matter what, what's going Every situation, yeah. Okay. As soon as the sun sets, every situation that has artificial light in it, the sleep plus glasses have to go on. Okay. Um, that is, you know, if there's one pair of glasses I, I want someone to buy, if they can only afford one pair, it's the sleep plus. It's so, so important for every single human on earth. Yeah, gosh, for sure. And what about so if they if you're at home and you've got halogen lights or you know the the normal the normal light bulbs in the daytime and you're cooking, you're a mum. You know what what would you wear? Uh, blue light computer blue glasses. Light. I would wear. Yeah, unless again you're suffering from stress, anxiety, or depression, or, or seasonal affective disorder, then get the yellows on. And wear the happy ones. Okay, and I also find that. This is probably, it's not as basic answer you've answered it already but basically walking around the city at night you know there's all these bright lights leds everywhere obviously that, that's the sleep glasses again right yeah absolutely and the good thing is like you know these aren't safety goggles like they were about five years ago these are you know <clears throat> we've got a creative director that works for us um, and knows all about fashion so uh, you know we've got some of the top in fashion frames at the moment like aviators like club masters and <laughs> you know, crystal sort of lenses, um, frames as well. And we always release new frames every six months as well um, and add to our collection and take out the ones that aren't fashionable anymore. So you've always got the latest style sunglasses, um, sorry, latest style blue pocket glasses, um, like the um, sunglasses shops have all the um, cool frames that come out for summer. We've got the cool frames, but just with blue light blocking technology in them. Yeah, that's cool. Actually, I just thought on, on my birthday list, because my birthday is coming up, I'm going to get another pair in a couple of different different styles. Because then, you know, you don't get bored, you know. It's like if you're wearing glasses all the time, then you want to have a selection of nice different frames, yep. don't you? 
Yeah. yeah, exactly what I do. Yeah, I've got custom ones myself. Um, but yeah, I like you know two or three different ones. I've one, you know, I have one in the car um, in case I'm you know out and it turns into night and I'm round a friend's house or out um, at a meeting. So I've always got you know a couple of pairs lying around. I've got a pair in the office I can keep in there and you know um, all, all over really. So you know you can never have too many. Definitely not. So let's talk a little bit more about sleep. I mean, I've been buying ha biohacking my sleep since, oh, as long as I can remember. I've got the blackout blinds. I used to even put pla black plastic bags with sellotape on my windows. Um, I wear the earplugs, the eye mask, I have a humidifier. It's got to be cool and dark. Um, red lights, of course, in the bedroom. And I now I've even got uh, an ULA. So no, no late meals, you know, no digital stimulation before bed, etc., etc. But uh, I didn't much consider the light around me too much before I went to bed. But this is very important, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's, it's essential. Some people, they just pop the melatonin tablet and think, OK, I'm going to go to sleep now. But it doesn't really work like that, does it? No, exactly. Like, Melatonin is an interesting one um, because there is some evidence out there that it thins the retina over time when you're um, taking it and, and endogenously, I'm sorry, exogenously. Um, so you just got to be very careful with it. Um, ultimately, what you're doing is you're, you're taking a hormone. Um, and, you know, when you take hormones, you, you affect your physiology and biology, um, you know, negatively if you're not taking it correctly. Now, with melatonin supplementation, melatonin is, as I've, I've, I've discussed, is produced in the absence of blue and green light. So if you're not wearing blue light glasses and exposing yourself to blue and green light and taking melatonin, that's not the natural way that hormone should be secreted. So you're really playing with um, playing with fire by doing that. Um, so I would just, I would say that there's there's no place for melatonin supplementation unless you've got an issue with the um, the secretion of melatonin. Um, you know that is you know like hereditary or, or genetic, um, which is you know one in a billion. Um, you know, light when we light when we sleep is is very important as well. We need total darkness when we sleep. So as you said, you know, you have the blackout blinds, um, which is fantastic. Um, if you don't have that, then you need to be wearing like a hundred percent light blocking sleep mask because you know if a car drives by and the headlights shine in, um, neighbours light, street light, maybe your partner gets up to to use the toilet in the night and you've got you know LED and halogen lights in. Just a short amount of exposure to that type of light on your closed eyelids whilst you sleep is enough to increase um, insulin resistance by 50% in a normal person, um, independent of food again. Um, and it will also, <coughs> excuse me, it will also um, impair the um, continuous synthesis of melatonin, which happens to about 2 or 3 a.m., if the light is shining at that type and time of the day, it can switch off melatonin production, which will then decrease restorative REM and deep sleep, which is clearing out all the, I guess, waste and damaged cells during the, um, that's happened during the day. So, you know, it's very, very important that there is no light that's hitting your eyes whilst you sleep. Well, that leads me nicely into your Remedy Sleep Mask. Uh, I have one of these, Andy, and congrats, because this is just genius what you've created. Zero light gets in. It's a complete game changer. It's soft. It's comfortable. There are no of those, like, elastic marks left on my face in the morning. Um, and you've got, you created, like these eye sockets that the eyes fit snugly inside each one and you can even blink inside but there's zero light gets in and I don't know if you've thought about this but for the girls with the fake eyelashes it's <coughs> remarkable because you don't have to worry about that about the the mask you know destroying your eyelashes while you sleep so I mean this this is the ultimate isn't it yeah absolutely like conventional sleep masks don't do what they need to do um you know, we, we've taken a product that already exists and made it better um, because we're actually making it do what it needs to do, which is create 100% light blocking in every single person. And the fact that it comes with adjustable eye sockets means that, you know, if you've got really wide eyes or close eyes together, you know, it doesn't really matter. You can um, position the eye socket. So you yes. And another issue with, um, with sleep masks is something um, called eye pressure. Um, when you're wearing a sleep mask that you can't open, your, you're applying pressure to your eye, 
eyeballs in, in effect. Yeah. Um, yeah. And small amounts of pressure to the eye over time can lead to eye pressure related issues such as glaucoma. Um, so if you're wearing one of the elasticated sleep masks that you know you can't open your eyes on you're applying pressure to your eyeballs and you could be leaving yourself open to some issues later in life um so you've got to make sure that you know it's 100 percent light blocking but you can also open your eyes as well and we, we managed to contour the sides of this thing as well slightly so you know it stays on if you're a side sleeper as well um, which i am um and you know it does i, I won't lie it does take probably couple of weeks to get used to but once you're used to it oh god your, your REM sleep will improve and um you'll just wait you'll, you'll sleep through the night and there was an academic study that showed that mm. how sleep and earplugs whilst they slept um achieved 22 percent increase in REM sleep compared to the nights they didn't wear those things oh for sure i mean i'm always telling my husband to put the earplugs in as well and He's just like, no, no, I don't want to do it. But living in London, there's just noise everywhere, you know. So, But yeah. the other thing that I use your mask for, um, great for meditation and yes. also essential when you're flying because, you know, you might get one of those masks on the plane, but this, yours are just phenomenal in comparison. Yeah, absolutely. Like, they're, they're such a great relief when you're on the plane as well and you want to sleep because they never fully turn the lights off, so... Yeah. You know, just just get them on. Even if you just want to zone out, get your earplugs or even your your earphones in. Get your sleep mask on, and you, you're in a completely different world. And you know, they're, they're essential. They're great for meditation. You know, you can get better focus. Um, you know, it's also great for um, deep touch pressure therapy as well. Um, you know, if you put the the mask on tight for a little bit of time as well, it actually relieves symptoms of you know you get from migraine and tension headaches as well. Um, so it's it's fantastic. Yeah. But, mm, yeah. Well, I have to say it's becoming more and more obvious that blue blocks really are, you know, vital addition for optimal health. Um, I mean, another area that I know that you're trying to pen you're penetrating is sports science with athletes, uh, footballers. What's your research there and what have you been finding? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the, the thing is with athletes is they're always looking for optimal performance. So they, they typically have the, the, phys <clears throat> the physical fitness sorted. Um, they have the diet sorted, which is which is fantastic. But um, where they lack is um, the light management side of things. So we worked um, actually before I come on to that. What the studies have shown is that one night of sleep deprivation um, in, in athletes can actually decrease sprinting and endurance um, by about ten percent on average. So you know these are elite level athletes that want to get the you know, even if it's 0.001% better, they, they want to do it. But, you know, we can get them 10% better by improving their sleep. And we worked with um, with a lot of sporting organisations. So we've worked with the Federation of, of, of Football here in, in Australia with the Socceroos. Um, and they used our um, Sleep Plus glasses to manage jet lag in late 2017 for their World Cup qualifier in Honduras. Wow. Um, and they qualified, so that was good. Um, good. So we worked, we worked directly with their sports side. Um, there's, there's clubs in the UK, um, Liverpool um, Football Club and Rangers that, that utilise, or some of their players utilise our glasses. Um, I won't say who, but um, some very famous England internationals um, for, for football also wear them. Um, we've got a two-time world champion wrestler that, that utilises them for performance, um, world champion bodybuilders um, that also utilise them, um, and, and various other athletes as well, poker players, if you can put that under a sport. Wow, um, yeah, where for sure. <laughs> they need it. They, Everybody needs it, realistically. It doesn't matter what you do in your daytime, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we had... Um, we had our glasses on um, a show in the UK on ITV called This Morning. Um, yes. Not so long ago, Holly Willoughby was was wearing them because um, Dr. Rangan Chatterjee, who's very big in the UK, um, utilises our glasses um, and is, is very firmly behind them in terms of um, you know the, the optimal um, I guess science that's behind them. I'm actually going to be flying over to the UK um, in 2020 to, to be on his podcast to talk more about Blue Block. So that'll be definitely one to, to have a listen to as well. He's, he's pioneering the way in sleep and, and health. Yeah, no, fantastic. And also one of my favourites, uh, Mr. Luke Story wears them. 
he does yeah I actually posted a picture of him on our social media wearing them uh, yesterday um, which is good so yeah no, he, he loves them as, as well um, he loves the sleep mask too and you know he's um, yeah very very uh, very much at the forefront of biohacking and, and only is only interested in, in optimization, which is what biohacking is, it's optimizing. So, um, you know, avoid, he avoids anything that's uh, not optimizing and, and sticks close to the companies that are optimizing. So, um, yeah. yeah, fair play for that. Love it, love it. So I'm sure everyone is going to be going to your website now to fit their face shape to the glasses that they want. But in the meantime, talking about biohacks, uh, can you just give us a couple of quick fire, you know, biohacks for everyday life regarding creating a good lighting and protecting ourselves, apart from obviously buying all your glasses, but we've got the red lights in the homes. What else? Absolutely. Make sure that you're seeing the sun at least three times a day. Um, once in the morning, once in the evening, and once at midday. Uh, side where you can, if you're working in an office, doesn't matter if it's um, if it's uh, you know raining outside. Just get under cover and be outside in the light. Um, salt lamp next to your computer um, is great because the red will balance the the blue that's Good coming call. out of your computer. Good call. Yeah. Um, yeah. Red light bulbs. As many of those as possible. Yeah. Yeah, ideally all of them, but um, no problem if, if not. Um, what else can you do? Um, try and power down all your devices at least an hour before bed, regardless to if you're wearing the glasses or not, because um, this will um, stop this, stop you being stimulated as well um, as, as the light. Um, if you go out after dark, um, and also if you're in your house after dark, cover up your skin. Mm. Um, your skin has its own clock, as we discussed, and will cause aging and skin damage. So cover up your skin. It'd be easy for you guys this winter. So yeah. cover up as much as you can. And ladies, wear a, wear a scarf, yeah? Yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. Wear a scarf when you're um, on a computer. Um, if you're underneath artificial light during the day, probably out way with this in a corporate environment is wear a hat um mm -hmm. so you're protecting your head from the blue light um and, and that's probably the big ones to be fair um candles after dark are a great idea as well you know you can still have your tv on but just put some candles around it um because the red light will help to counteract some of the blue that's coming from it so mm -hmm. just little little sort of hacks like that really lovely thank you andy and i know that you and your, your wife, you're very passionate about everything to do with uh, sort of health and well-being, holistic well-being. What does a day look like for you? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, I'm a creature of habit. So I will get up and watch the sunrise. Um, I will go straight outside and I will sit there for about 30 minutes myself. Um, as long as you're seeing a couple of minutes, it's fine. I then go to the gym um, and then I eat my breakfast. Um, I do... The gym, breakfast, and the sunrise in the morning because I want to entrain my master clock with my exercise. I want to entrain my liver clock with eating. So I want to entrain them all at the same time because they're a big symphony of instruments that make up the orchestra of the, the central clock. I then um, go about my work. I'm for I can work outside on my laptop, so um, I can do a lot of my work under natural light, um, which is really good. I'm getting my good sunlight come in, um, and, and the red in the sun is then counteracting the, the negative effects of the blue in my laptop. When it gets hot, because it gets to about 35 to 40 degrees in Australia, now we're going into the summer, I will come inside and, and do some more work in, inside. Um, early evening, I will... Typically, about two hours before sunrise, um, sunset, eat my last meal of the day because I don't want to be eating under artificial light. Um, so I stop eating at four, do my intermittent fasting from then onward. Right. Um, and then I go and watch the sunset. Um, so Katie and I go and watch that um, because that then triggers the message to the central clock that it is getting going to be getting dark and it's time to start secreting melatonin i get back from i normally go and watch it at the beach because i live a couple of minutes from the beach so oh, i so put jealous on, <laughs> <laughs> i put on my blue blocks blue light blocking glasses the sleep plus glasses yeah. and then typically i'm in bed by that nine half nine with my remedy sleep mask on and then repeating it all because typically the sun rises here in australia we don't have daylight savings which is another amazing thing mm -hmm. for us um we 
we're getting up at like five, half five in the morning for sunset, uh, sunrise already. Um, so we're in bed early. So we're um, yeah, early risers and early to bed, and that seems to work very well for us. Both. Wow, that really is the optimal health, I have to say. And we all we all want to come and live with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're all welcome. It's amazing in Australia. So. Yeah. So I mean, that we've been talking now for a long time, and I'm wary of the time. I'm sure you've got lots of. You probably want to go to bed. It's probably quite late there now. Um, but finally, what is the future for for Blue blocks what have you got planned coming up yeah so we're in r&d phase for two new products at the moment that will be released in 2020 um one is a never seen before red light therapy device um Mm. there's a lot of noise out there at the moment on red light therapy and and it's like blue light blocking there's a lot of rubbish out there um so we've designed again something um I won't go into too much detail on, but it's game changing and will be released early 2020. Um, and it will be great for yeah for, for everything restorative. So it's going to be helping you know counteract you know any skin damage, um, any you know restoring collagen in the skin. It's going I, need to it. I need it. I need it. I need it. And it's going to be it's going to be very affordable compared to some of the other ones out there, and it's also going to be zero flicker and zero EMF as well, um, which I don't. Well, you've got to keep me posted on that one, Andy, for sure. I certainly will. And the other thing we're working on is a zero flicker LED light bulb um, Hmm. that will emit only good frequencies of light for after dark use um, to start with, and then one for during the day. That one's. We're almost there with it. We're, we're working quite closely with a guy in the US called Brian Hoyer, mm-hmm. um, who's an EMF and flicker specialist. Um, so we're designing these bulbs and sending them to him. And every time we send him one, we're getting closer to zero flicker, but we're not quite there yet. Um, so we're making sure that the best in the world are testing these glasses, um, testing these bulbs before we release them. Um, so we're back to the drawing board on that one, but we're getting closer. We're getting less and less flicker each time, but we're not releasing it unless it's zero. Um, so, yeah, we, we think we'll get there probably in the next six months on that one. Well, all the best with everything, Andy, and thank you so much. I mean, this has been phenomenal. Remind us once more your website and social media sites. Absolutely. So blueblocks.com is where you want to go, B-L-U-B-L-O-X.com. Uh, blocks in the Facebook uh, uh, Blue Blocks official. If you're on Facebook, check out Light and Health. It's a group where someone's watching the sunrise as the picture. Mm. About 5,000 members, and that's a great place to start as well if you have any questions because we've got a really solid community in there of people that want to help. Love it. Okay, so just once more, uh, listen so you get it. It's B L U B L O X, Blue Blocks. So if you type that into anything, basically, you'll find Andy and Kate. Well, that's all we have time for. Many thanks for your time, Andy. I have loved chatting with you. It's been enlightening. So um, we've got a lot to give our listeners to digest. No problem. Thank you so much for having me on and um, listening to me uh, speak. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. This is Johanna Thomas, your resident holistic nutritionist for The Way Forward.